Hi everyone! Today I will test some color and um, infrared filters made by BMW. I will use two Fujifilm camera. The first one is a Nix E3 that I um, self modified to full spectrum. The second is a Nix T2 that is completely stock. And uh, as a lens, I will use the XF35 f1.4 that I set to f8 to all the pictures. The first filter is the 040, an orange filter. The second one is the 090, is uh, like a uh, Hoya 25A. The third filter is a uh, 091, slightly darker red. The fourth filter is the 092, a darker red. And the last is an infrared filter, the 093. Now just a, a few little technical things before we start with the images. This is a diagram I will use uh, to show you where the filters are working and uh, which wavelength will block and will let pass. You can understand that the human eyes can see colors between 380s to 700, 750 nanometers. Everything below is on the ultraviolet side and everything over is on the infrared wavelength. And a full spectrum camera is able to see at around 350 nanometers and nothing below. And uh, has a quite good sensibility for the infrared and near infrared uh, up uh, until 1000 nanometers. Schneider Kreuznach, the manufacturer of BMW filters, was kind of known to give us a diagram to understand how wave filters work on blocking some wavelengths. First of all, some camera settings, ISO 200, automatic white balance and uh, aperture priority mode. This is to have a standard exposure for both the, of the camera. The first six pictures you are looking are made from um, the full spectrum camera. The last six are made from the uh, stock camera. You can already see some difference, but the most uh, interesting thing is uh, how the color depth of the filters impact on the exposure time. Let's uh, look at the picture without any filter. And you can see the full spectrum camera uh, chosen at 750 of a second time. And the stock camera had uh, nearly 500, 480 of a second exposure time. You can already understand that the full spectrum camera sensor is able to uh, read more light without the hot pass filter. Also, you can notice uh, the biggest difference on the two darker uh, red filter, the 91 and the 92, compared to the 91 and 92 on the full spectrum camera. Also notice the big difference between the 093, the infrared filter, 80 of a second on the full spectrum camera, and here 30 seconds on the stock camera. By the way, the overall picture is underexposed because the camera was not uh, able to uh, correctly read the exposure and even the autofocus uh, wasn't able to focus correctly. I had to set the focus manually. The full spectrum camera didn't have any of these problems. First thing I will do to have a correct comparison is to set the white balance in the same uh, zone of the picture between the full spectrum and stock camera. And also I will do uh, an auto adjust here to have the same correct exposure for each of the pictures. I will show you the first one. I will choose this, uh, um, sorry, this zone here on each picture. The first two pictures are no filter images. On the left side you have the full spectrum image, on the right side the stock image. 
you can already see the different color cast between the two images with the white balance set on Capture One. And uh, the full spectrum image has a little bit of violet on the overall image compared to the stock one. You can already see the greens are not well rendered since there are, there are a lot of uh, infrared, a tiny bit of ultraviolet uh, range inside of the image, but they are quite similar, not so big difference uh, to compare it. If we choose the two images done with the 040 filter, the orange one, the difference is much more visible. You can see the uh, infrared coming a little bit on the image, on the grass and on the trees. And the sky is gonna go to the green uh, yellow cast. And uh, you may notice that the crane on the back is a tiny bit visible compared to the stock image. The stock image doesn't mean anything with the filter, but this is just to let you understand the difference between the two. Let's go to the 090 filter, that is the red filter, the first, the first one, the lighter of the red filter. And as on the 040 filters, you start seeing more infrared coming out of the image as some color disappearing and going to the black and white since we are cutting anything under the 580 nanometers. Let's go to the 091. And as I already told you, just notice the difference on exposure time, 500 of a second compared to the 55 of a second. So the removing the hot pass filter allows uh, the sensor to be reached by more light. And uh, we are also adding some contrast on the sky here. And here you can see there is more visible this line, electrical line here and here. Let's go to the 092, that is color infrared filter, but is not still a real infrared filter. And now we are cutting everything under the 695 nanometers. And you can see the color are disappearing from both picture. And the infrared light, light is even more visible. And we are adding contrast between the, the sky and the other object. And also here on the stock image, some color are disappearing. And we are just having some greens visible. And let's go to the infrared filter, the 093. Okay, here we have the biggest difference between the exposure time, 80 of a second, compared to the 30 seconds. But we already uh, noticed that this image was well under exposure by the automatic uh, exposure of the camera. So let's check the real difference. This is the uh, correction from uh, Capture One of the uh, full spectrum image. 065 is a nearly half step, EV step. And this is the image from the stock, stock camera and uh, is a two and uh, nearly three steps of uh, EV correction. So you can understand if this is not 30 seconds, but this is more of one minute uh, and 30 seconds on exposure. Also notice that the full spectrum image is already on black and white since we are cutting all the visible light. And here the sensor is struggling to read something to have some light hitting the sensor. And uh, you can see the, the uh, grass now is uh, has a co green color, let's uh, or cyan color maybe, and uh, this is the infrared coming out from the image. 
By the way, I will uh, show you better. We are having some brighter spot, that is called a hot spot from the lens. And also look uh, closely here. These dots are the sensor pixel not able to read an image or burnt. I don't know if my camera has some uh, uh, burnt uh, pixel. And here compared to the stock image, you can see there is no white dots or anything else. Another interesting comparison um, is when uh, I set a um, black and white profile on these images. So let's go here on adjustment with built-in styles and I will show you the black and white contrast but it's better to understand the difference. You can see there are some big differences between the full spectrum and the stock images. You notice better on the grass here that on the full spectrum the grass became white compared to the stock image here. The grass is black or darker gray. Let's compare the infrared image between the two. You can spot the hot spot here. The images are quite similar between the two in a, using the infrared filter. You just notice that the stock image is a little bit uh, less contrasty, a little bit foggy between the two and uh, has a more pronounced uh, uh, hotspot here, which is just very visible. And if we compare the orange filter here, we can see the difference between the two images. As I already told you, here the grass and the trees are lighter gray. Here in the stock image is a darker gray. So the camera reads the contrast in a, a different way. Let's see the uh, 090 light red filter, let's say a classic filter. Here the difference is more visible. We have a, a darker sky on the full spectrum camera compared to the stock camera here. And we have uh, a darker uh, grass compared to the full spectrum image. With uh, these images it's quite easy to understand how the filters cut part or all the visible wave range from, for the human eye. The first image, the top one here, is the full spectrum, no filter image. And you can see the color rendering is nearly correct, just a tiny bit of, a tiny bit of infrared. But uh, starting from the uh, 040, the orange filter, and going up to the light red, the medium red, the darker red, you can see the top part of the logo disappearing from the color rendering because we are matching the, the last image of the orange is the 093, the infrared image, and has no visible light for the human eye. And you can see the logo is nearly disappeared, and the lion has no color at all. This is because the camera is recording only the uh, infrared uh, light. Let's have a look on uh, how the images uh, uh, changes using the channel mixer color inversion. There's a, a classic uh, editing for the infrared images. Uh, let's add uh, a channel mixer um, layer, clicking here on a channel mixer uh, option. And uh, we need to swap the red and the blue channel so with the red output channel selected we just need to choose the red color here and set it to zero and go to the blue color here and set to 100 okay and do the same thing with the blue set the blue down there to zero and the red here to 100. This is a classic editing for the infrared images to do the false color. As you can see, this is the full spectrum image. 
nothing so fancy or if you like this kind of look it's up to you <laughs> with this uh, orangish uh, sky if we go to the 040 filter you can already see that we have a sort of a, a Kodak aerochrome image and it's quite good with some uh, images especially if you increase the uh, contrast or uh, you add a little bit of dehaze and clarity. This is the uh, 090 filter and also you have a, a good looking uh, um, false color infrared with uh, some yellow goldish uh, uh, green and trees and the sky is gonna uh, lose a little bit of saturation. If we go to the darker red you can see how the um, image loses some reds and the, gre uh, the green became a little bit yellower. Let's look at the darker red. Again the image is losing some colors and the grass is a little bit on a pale yellow or washed yellow. And the last image is the black and white image. Here the color mixer does nothing. We can take it or edit, you can see down there doesn't change anything because we don't have any color. If we do the same on the sign image, now we are looking at the sign image and please notice how the uh, logo here and this one here change when I switch between the various uh, filters. Right now uh, the channel uh, mixer layer is turned off, so I will turn it on. Okay, we can see already how the color changes on the full spectrum image. Let's go to the 040, the orange. This is without the channel mixer active and with the channel mixer active. You can see the classic uh, Kodak uh, uh, aerochrome look on the image with our red grass. Let's go to the uh, 090 filter, the light red, and you can see the grass is uh, going to the goldish or hot yellow color, but we are losing the top of the colors here and some colors on this logo here too. I will turn it off the channel mixer so you can see how the inverted colors works. Let's go to the 091, we are losing more reds and the logo is losing nearly completely the top. Let's go to the 092, the darker red. I will turn it on and off the channel mixer so you can see the difference. The last one, the infrared, you will see a simple black and white images and here obviously the channel mixer or the inverter color does nothing since we are out of the visible uh, wavelengths for human eye, so no colors are rendered on the image. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel for other interesting videos. Thank you very much.